Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants from Come On Now, the podcast. This is your host, Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, and I'm here to bring you another rant. But before I start, thank you all for your support of our channel and helping us grow it. We are growing closer to 2,100 subscribers. Please help us get there tonight. Make it happen tonight. Hell, make it happen 2,200. We're growing and growing and growing and growing, and we're doing it because of you. So please sure to like, subscribe, and follow, and share these videos. Let me jump right in now. I am of Cuban descent. My father was born in Cuba. I was born and raised in Miami Beach, Florida. Lived in Miami-Dade County my entire life until I turned 30. And then I moved up to Broward County, Fort Lauderdale area, and now I reside in Pompano Beach, which is just north of downtown Fort Lauderdale, maybe 15 minutes away. For those of you who are not familiar with South Florida, Pompano Beach is about 45 minutes from downtown Miami. I moved up to Broward County for a couple of reasons. One, my ex-wife, she lived in Broward County. But two, even with my Hispanic, my Latino background, I've heard people say that Hispanic is not proper. I've never heard that in my life. But with my, my Latino background, I don't speak very good Spanish. My father never really spoke Spanish at the house. That sucked. I wish he did. But it became a lot harder to get a job in Miami because most jobs require that you speak both languages, English and Spanish. If you don't speak Spanish, it becomes harder and harder to become employed. So I did move up partially because of employment. And in Broward County, believe it or not, leave crossing that county line, it, there's a major difference when it comes to English and Spanish. Lots of people still speak Spanish, but it's not remotely close to Dade, Miami-Dade County, which is over 50, 60 percent uh, Latino population, primarily Cuban. So I say this because what I saw last night at the Copa America at the Hard Rock Stadium in Miami was the most embarrassing thing that I can recall in my life. In South Florida. Heck, I can't recall seeing anything like this at any sporting venue in the United States of America. Colombia and Argentina are obviously rivals, and they were playing in the championship of the Copa America. And for those of you who are not soccer aficionados, I am not even a soccer aficionado. However, I did watch the game. Uh, my father-in-law was here, and he's a big soccer guy, so I did watch the game with him. It was a game that, quite frankly, for me, wasn't the greatest of games. It was 0-0 for 112 minutes um, before Argentina hit a goal with uh, minute, 100 and, with about eight minutes left in in additional time, basically like overtime, um, to take a 1-0 lead and held on to win 1-0. These tickets were costing well over $1,000 for the cheap seats on the secondary market. Tickets were going for four, five, six, seven, ten thousand $10,000. People were buying parking passes for $400, $500, $600 just to be at the, at, the, at the stadium, even if they didn't have tickets. I bring that up because the way this situation was handled at this arena, at this stadium, let me first show you what actually took place. Take a look at this. If you haven't seen this yet, now you get the chance to see it. Both Colombian and Argentina. Argentina is blue and white. Colombians are yellow. Climbing up to the... Yeah, I would venture to guess that most of them do not. Look at these fans. Climbing through air conditioning ducts. This is outside of the stadium, right? This is outside. People climbing these fences. These fences are dangerous as hell to climb. You got Colombians doing it. Argentinians doing it. They're all doing it. I saw a lot more Colombians doing this stuff, but you got people being arrested left and right, trying to break through. There was videos of people busting through and trying to run up. The game was delayed by like 30 minutes. By like 30 minutes, not more than that. The game was supposed to start at 8. It started at 9.15. It was delayed, delayed by an hour and 15 minutes. Can you imagine if a professional football game ever got delayed by that? Now take a look at this. This is inside of the suites area, the 72 club. In, in, the hard, in the Hard Rock. This is the 72. These are the suites. This was done to the... What, like, this is an escalator into the suites. Who the hell? Have these people never been in an escalator before? Have they never left their home? This is unbelievable. Like, th this, is, this, is, this is shameful. 
This is absolutely shameful. What the hell is going on here? Now, look, man, I get it. I get it. Soccer fans are soccer fans are probably the most passionate fans of any sport in the world. Americans don't truly understand it. This is Bible for them. This is like God soccer. But this shit was an embarrassment to all Latinos around the world. This is an embarrassment. And let's be real. If these were black people, they might have been shot dead. I mean, keep it a buck. If this was a black event and there were black people doing that shit, uh, what these Latinos were doing, they might have been shot dead by police officers. I've been seeing that up and down my timeline, and I don't disagree. These people were acting like barbarians. Animals. No home training. You do not get a pass because of bad preparation by the Hard Rock Stadium. You don't get a pass to act like an animal, a barbarian, because of bad preparation by a stadium. The game was delayed an hour and 15 minutes. People were eventually let in. The place was completely full. You're climbing fences, scaling walls. People are trying to bust in without tickets. This is insane. And even if you had tickets... What would make you think it's logical to try to bust through air ducts? Every single person involved in busting through the air ducts should be arrested. What the freaking hell is going on here? If you are, that, that, that is vandalism, clear as day. That's thousands of dollars in damage. The escalator, that's tens of thousands of dollars in damage. I don't care if Steven Ross is a multi-billionaire and it's an insurance claim and all that. I do not care. Just because someone's rich or has money doesn't give you the right to destroy their stuff because you choose to do so. Because if someone came into your house and destroyed your air conditioning system or destroyed your freaking elevator in your, in your, in your apartment building or destroyed your freaking refrigerator or destroyed something in your house, you'd have a big ass problem with it. This was embarrassing. A disgrace. And it made every person, it makes every Latino who wouldn't who didn't do that crap look really bad. It makes us all look like freaking animalistic human beings over a soccer game. And I get it, they love their soccer. This was a monster thing for Colombia in particular. Big for Argentina too, although they just won the World Cup, but ma massive for Colombia. However, you cannot behave this way. You're going to a game. Now, here's the flip side. And I'm not sitting here absolving behavior because behavior is behavior and it does not matter. The Hard Rock Stadium has hosted multiple Super Bowls, two World Series, F1 for the last three years, major tennis tournaments. They've hosted friendlies involving Argentina and or Colombia in the past. For soccer, I understand friendlies do not have the connotation, the implication, and the, the importance of what we had yesterday here in Miami. But never has this type of thing happened. I will tell you why. The Hard Rock Stadium dropped the ball big time. They failed because on Saturday there was a thing in the newspaper or on the on, it was in the newspaper I read where they said if you didn't have a ticket to the game, don't come to the stadium. How the hell are you going to tell someone they can't come to the stadium without tickets to the game if they bought a parking pass? People were selling these things online for three, four, five hundred, six hundred dollars. People who couldn't get into the building like they do in American football every freaking weekend, college football every freaking weekend will go tailgate for hours and hours and hours and want to party with their friends. They might not go into the game, but they're there to party and tailgate. And what is the difference? And they'll watch the game on TV in a setup outside of the stadium. This is exactly what happened when Edmonton played the Florida Panthers. The game was going on inside. There was a massive area outside in Edmonton where people were watching the game basically in some large area outside the, outside the stadium, the arena. 
what in the world is going on here? So they say, don't come. Well, people ain't listening to that. They're going to come. They got, they bought parking passes. And even if they didn't buy a parking passes, they took the, I mean, whatever, whatever way to get there, people want to be at that building with or without tickets. And they wanted to be part of the event and be part of the party. So for the hard rock to do this the day before and think that anyone's going to listen to this crap is absolutely insane, right? Later on, they did bring out televisions. They had big screen monitors and they put them out there because the people were not going to leave. They weren't going to miss the game. They brought the monitors out and people watched the game from the parking lot who didn't have tickets. But that behavior is horrendous. And the Hard Rock's preparation was horrendous. You know what they do differently for the Super Bowl? Because I've been, I've never been to the Super Bowl, but they've had it down here multiple times. And when they had the Pro Bowl the week before the Super Bowl, it was the same security system. They didn't, you couldn't get near the stadium. You went through long security checkpoints, and it was a hundred, 150 yards away from the building. That did not happen yesterday. They bum rushed that gate. It was riot central. This is the type of stuff you see in European soccer where people are getting trampled and dying to go watch a soccer game. It's nuts. But you've got to be more prepared. The World Cup is coming here in 2026. There's going to be like seven games at that same stadium. I don't believe the championship is going to be there, but there's going to be seven games at that stadium. And you cannot sit here and tell me that that makes this organization look at all prepared. It, 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 completely unprepared. They better get their crap together and be prepared in, in two years because what happened then will be worse. So the, the final is at MetLife in New York. Okay. I hope MetLife, I hope MetLife is prepared because if there anything looks anything like this, they better, they better not let people near that damn building by 200 yards without a ticket. But what happened there, you need to be far more prepared to keep people awake, to keep from having freaking people getting trampled. I, I mean, people could legitimately die in situations like this. What happens if someone gets stuck in an air duct? What happens if someone gets impaled trying to jump the fence? I mean, I hate to say it, but you might need to put barbed wire on the top of that fence to dissuade people from risking getting sliced and diced by a barbed wired fence. But people, we got to be human. This is a sport. I love sports. I have cried over sports. I would never risk my life to watch a sport. I would never risk freedom to watch a sport. Maybe I'm not as big a sports fan as I thought. But that behavior made Latinos around the world look like trash. Those of you who were involved in that, you should be ashamed of yourself. And all of you belong in jail. All of you belong in jail. Absolutely ridiculous behavior. There was video of people just randomly ripping popcorn bags in the concessions area and just throwing them in the air. There's going to be a mess as it is from the game, but why are you doing that? For what reason? Do you have no home training? No one's asked you to clean up under the seat at the game, but to just pick up stuff, just throw it everywhere in the concessions area just because? What, what is the point of this? But Hard Rock, you better be more prepared with far out checkpoints. Don't let people near the building. But people, you've got to be human. You've got to be human. Because what I saw yesterday was absolutely despicable. Horrendous. Let me know your thoughts. Be sure to like, follow, subscribe, and share this video. Come on now, podcast, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and come on now, pod on X. Come on now.